This is part 54 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss Angular Resolve Guard with an example. This is continuation to part 53, so please watch part 53 before proceeding. At the moment, when we navigate to the list route, notice only a part of the page loads first and after 2 seconds, when the data becomes available, that's when the page is updated with the employee list. You don't want to display a partial page to the user while waiting for the data. Before we activate the list route and display the view template associated with the list route, we want to prefetch the data. Once the data is available, that's when we want to render the view template so the end user does not see a partial page. So in short, we want to delay rendering the routed component view template until all necessary data have been fetched. To prefetch data for a route, we use a route resolver. A route resolver can be implemented as a function or as a service. In this video, let's implement the route resolver as a service and in a later video, we'll discuss how to implement it as a function. The first step to prefetch data for a route is to implement the route resolver service. Let's do this in its own file. So within Visual Studio Code to the employees folder, let's add a new file. I'm going to name this employee dash list dash resolver since this is a service let's include service suffix and this is a typescript file so dot ts extension a service is nothing but a class so as usual let's create and export a class I'm going to name this class employee list resolver service For this service class to behave as a resolver service, we need to make this class implement resolve interface provided by Angular. We don't have this resolve interface imported yet, so let's import it from Angular router. And notice by default it is surrounding this string with double quotes, but our linting tool TSLint doesn't like that, so let's use single quotes instead. This resolve interface supports generics, so using its generic parameter, we can specify the type of data this resolver service is going to return. In our case, we are using this route resolver service to provide data for this list route which is an array of employees. So using the resolve interface generic parameter, let's specify the return type as an employee array. At the moment, we don't have this employee type imported, so let's import it. Now, if we look at the definition of this resolve interface, notice this interface has got just one method and that method is resolve. So our resolver service class needs to provide implementation for this method. So let's copy and paste that method right here. Now, if you look at the return type of this method, notice it can either return an observable of t, promise of t, or just the t. And t here is the type our resolver service is going to return. In our case, that type is an employee array. So let's return an observable of employee array. Now we don't have activated route snapshot imported. So let's import that. Let's also import router state snapshot. And finally, observable. Notice this method has got two input parameters. Activated route snapshot, router state snapshot. For our implementation of this resolve method, we are not going to use those two input parameters for anything. Now, what do we want this resolve method to do? Well, we want it to call our employee service and then return the array of employees for the list route. At the moment, we don't have the employee service injected, so let's use the constructor and inject employee service. Let's create a private field. I'm going to name it underscore employee service. And this is of type employee service. Now all we want to do is use this private field. Call get employees method and return the array of employees. Oh. One thing we almost forgot to do is decorate the service class with at injectable decorator. So this completes our first step. 
implement the route resolver service. Implementing the route resolver service is straightforward. We make the service class implement the resolve interface and then provide implementation for the interface method resolve. The next step is to register our route resolver service. At the moment within our application we have only one module and that is a root application module app module. So let's go ahead and register our route resolver service by including it in the providers array. Let's also import it. The third step is to add the route resolver service to the route for which we want to prefetch data. In our case, we want to prefetch data for the list route. So notice in addition to path and component properties on the list route, we also have the resolve property. The value for this resolve property is an object containing key and a value. The key is employee list. You can give it any meaningful name you want. Since in our case, we are dealing with list of employees, I named it employee list. And the value is our resolver service. In our case, we named the resolver service class employee list resolver service. So we specified that as the value. When the Angular router sees this resolve property on a route, it's going to use the associated resolver service to prefetch data and then activate the route and render its associated view template. So let's go ahead and add our route resolver service to the list route. Our routes are configured in app.module.ts file. Our list route is right here. Let's format this a bit first. In addition to path and component properties, we want resolve property. The value for this is an object with a key and a value. I'm going to name the key employee list and the value is our resolver service. Our final step is to read the prefetched data from the activated route. The component that is associated with the list route is list employees component. So within list employees component, we are injecting the Angular's activated route service and then we are using the snapshot approach to read the prefetched data. We can also use the observable approach. We discussed the difference between the snapshot and observable approaches in our previous videos in this series. Notice on the snapshot property, we're using the data property and the key for that is employee list. The same key that we used with the resolve property. Now notice within our list employees component, we are already injecting the Angular's activated route service using the constructor. So let's use this private field underscore route to read the prefetch data. And the key that we use is employee list, the same key that we have used against the resolve property. Now we want to store this prefetch data in employees property. Notice at the moment we are still using the employee service to retrieve the list of employees. We don't have to do this anymore. We'll delete this code in just a bit. But before that, let's store the prefetch data in the employees property. Now let's delete this code that calls employee service. Let's move these four lines of code into the constructor. We are not referencing employee service anymore, so we can remove this parameter right here. And we can also remove the associated employee service import statement right here. Let's save all our changes and then take a look at the browser. Notice now when I click on the create link, the create route is immediately activated and its associated view template is rendered. When I click on the list route, notice for two seconds nothing happens. During these two seconds, it's prefetching the data. And once the data is prefetched, that's when the list route is activated and then the associated view template is displayed. Notice this again, when I click on the list route, nothing happens for two seconds. After two seconds, the URL changes to list and its associated view template is rendered. At the moment, while we're waiting for the route resolver to fetch data, the end user does not have any visual clue indicating that the request is being processed. In our upcoming videos, We'll discuss how to display the loading icon so the user knows the application is busy processing and he does not end up clicking multiple times. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.